Okay, so we're going to go through um, some basics of Bookmap, what Bookmap is showing you, and then we're going to jump into the order flow. So we've been doing this, and there's you know there's new traders in the webinar here, so we want to uh, show you what Bookmap is displaying, and then um, uh, the advantages it's giving you here, or the transparency, uh, and then you're able to use that within your trading. All right, so uh, uh, that's what we'll start with, and then we'll get right into the uh, the order flow here. So risk disclaimer, uh, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, go to bookmap.com. More information uh, is there, and become a free member, uh, and you'll have access to a lot of resources, uh, and then uh, you can reach out to us at support at VeloxPro, or support at bookmap.com uh, and uh, here's our website I just want to show you where you can find bookmap because you get a free trial okay so scroll down under pricing here uh, and uh, this is where you can find it and uh, there's there's only really two uh, or different uh, versions here there's the basic and the advanced all right now these over here the basic and advanced uh, they're packaged with uh, DX feed which allows you access to uh, U.S. equities, uh, and I'll show you that uh, in some of those equities uh, as well. Uh, but um, uh, the, there's the difference here between the two, the basic and the advanced, uh, is um, uh, the, well, of course, the price, 49 per month versus 99 per month, and they are billed quarterly, uh, but you get the advantage here. Uh, and that is the being able to click or trade right from the chart with one click trading, uh, large lot tracker, um, balance uh, indicators here. Uh, the iceberg detector, which is, is really nice now. We've updated that, um, you know, well, about a month ago. Uh, I, I really like it. Uh, and then the correlation tracker, which is also really nice. This is new. Okay, so uh, you'll get that as a package. Now, if you have the basic, uh, you can also subscribe to uh, a package deal. Um, and it's uh, uh, $50 a month. Uh, for for that, so it, it'll be just the same price as getting the advance, basically. Okay. Uh, the deal with DX feed, uh, the only the only difference here is that uh, you'll get a little bit of a deal uh, on, uh, you know, I think you save about ten or fifteen dollars on uh, the price um, for that DX feed, uh, and then that that's it. All right. So um, the uh, you can if you have the basic or the advanced you can still get DX feed. You, you can subscribe to it, okay? Now, we're not a broker, so um, the, uh, and we're not providing any of those services. So just, um, uh, you'll have to uh, uh, subscribe to it through us, uh, and then uh, uh, then it'll be enabled, uh, and uh, and you will be charged, okay? But we don't see any of that. It just goes right to, you know, it's a DX feed, okay? Uh, let's see. Ah, some of the resources. If you become a member in the in the portal here, the user portal, uh, that's where you can find uh, a lot of videos here, uh, bookmap uh, components and features, and then there are all sorts of videos here uh, to watch as well. Uh, and um, uh, but you can also see them on our YouTube channel, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. So if you subscribe any in, uh, you know, set your alerts uh, anytime a, a, a new video comes in, then uh, uh, you'll be you'll be updated. All right. And uh, the most updated information you're going to get is following us on Twitter. OK, so you can uh, you can do that here uh, with our Twitter feed. OK. Let's see. I already got a few questions. OK, uh, you want to know about me as a trader? Oh no! Oh, you want to know about um, uh, talk about how to trade? Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, you know, we'll go through the details in the order flow. Uh, and um, what uh, you know, I mean, we're not a strategy. Uh, you know, we're a platform. So, so your question. I mean, think about it. If you were going to ask TradeStation. Uh, or E-Trade or, or someone else, then, uh, uh, you know, how, how do I trade? Well, they're not going to give you those details. Uh, you know, they're, they're a platform. Uh, they provide you access. And then however you trade uh, is up to you. So it, we're not an educator. Uh, but that said, uh, I want to show you something here. Uh, we uh, Hold on a minute. Okay. 
Um, so I, I'll show you something here. We just put together uh, last week a, um, a new education course. So click on this link here. And uh, I, I'll put this into the chat for you as well. All right. There you go. Uh, and uh, there's part one through four. And you can see they're, they're about an hour each. All right. And um, what we do, uh, part one, it's going to go through the, the uh, basic market mechanics. And this is important to understand. Uh, it might be simple to uh, a lot of you. Um, but even for those that are advanced traders, this is a lot of data that they've never looked at before. And to understand exactly how these markets trade, uh, just the, the binary mechanics of how a trade unfolds. Uh, and, uh, and then, uh, and then we just branch out from there. So then from, from that part, we get into part two and we go through, uh, those mechanics within a structure. All right. And then we take that into part three and then we look at strategies and setups uh, within uh, this, the uh, uh, the structure and uh, and looking for uh, those basic market mechanics. OK. And then in part four, uh, we add in more confluences. OK. So we're looking we're really uh, honing in there, homing in and trying to find uh, exactly uh, or, you know, really, really uh, enhance our uh, uh, our, our trading uh, entries, exits, and management. All right, so uh, take a look at those, uh, and uh, I think uh, you'll find them helpful. All right, so uh, I, I will go through uh, some trades though today, and and we'll just we'll just kind of um, uh, show you uh, what Bookmap is uh, uh, displaying, and then how to uh, how to use it. All right, so let's jump in here. And uh, and take a look at the uh, uh, let's see uh, the S and P ah no I had a um, a request to look at gold uh, and uh, and the euro okay I don't think I have the euro up uh, I have the CAD instead uh, it's too bad because we had the ECB uh, earlier today uh, but uh, you know the uh, we're seeing some volatility here and it's not due to the news uh, it's due to um, a geopolitical uh, concerns. Uh, you know, Congress in, uh, here in the U.S., its inability to, uh, to act on its uh, uh, health care plan. Uh, and uh, traders are, are very, very, uh, um, uh, they're watching this closely uh, because if um, they cannot pass this, uh, it's very dubious that they're going to pass tax reform. And that's really the issue. Uh, if, uh, uh, and the markets are skittish on, on exactly this issue. OK, so just trying to not trying to get political, just trying to get very objective here uh, and tell you what's going on. OK. Let's take a look at uh, a higher time frame here. All right. And uh, that's the NQ. OK, and this is the uh, the ES. Yeah, we're just kind of chopping around. Uh, but uh, uh, and then we'll take a look at gold here. Yeah, big move in gold. All right. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll check that out. Uh, and. Um, Okay, so let's jump into Bookmap, all right? And what I'm going to do here is we're just going to go through the basics because uh, you know we've we've got some new traders in here. Uh, it, it, for those of it, it, point point out, um, you know, I, I see a lot of names that uh, uh, you know we, we, I'm very familiar with. A lot of you guys, uh, if, if you're new, uh, let me know uh, and um, uh, you know ask some questions here. This is really your uh, your time uh, to to uh, to ask questions. OK, so let's uh, let's start off here by looking at book map. OK, and we're just going to turn everything off. Even best bid and offer. OK, this is a candlestick chart. Uh, it is a five minute candlestick chart. OK. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm happy, Francesco. Uh, that this is uh, you like watching this. Uh, it's insightful to see how the candlesticks and then the order flow all together at the end, uh, because really, you know, looking at this candlestick chart, there's so much data here that we're just not getting. Uh, and um, uh, those of you who uh, who trade uh, auction theory and, and market profile or volume profile, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, you can start to gauge some of the selling pressure with wicks or, you know, some of the buying pressure here with a, a, a big bar. Uh, but um, uh, we don't know 
uh, who's engaged, where, how much, where they were bidding and offering, uh, and uh, how much interest they really had at those areas. Okay, so uh, let's um, uh, let's go through this. All right, so uh, that is the problem here with this candlestick chart. Okay, we have volume down here in a sub chart, and uh, you know that's on on most uh, most platforms, uh, and that's helpful, right? Uh, we can see 9:30 volume picks up here, uh, and then we see the spike after or just around 10:30 here or after 10:30, uh, and um, uh, a lot of volume came in. Okay. So, uh, and, and now we're seeing a, a kind of a retracement back down on, on little volume. Okay. So, uh, interesting stuff. Uh, the, um, uh, but we're not, we're not seeing a lot of um, uh, ac activity. Uh, it, it's missing, all right? And that, that's the problem here. So, let's uh, just turn on the best bid and offer. Okay. Now you can see, uh, if we zoom in maybe a little bit more too, Okay, all I've added on here is the best bid and offer is historical here, all right? And we can see that best uh, offer is the red line, best bid is the green line, okay? But look at how quickly this moved, all right? And then uh, look how it kind of chopped around here for a while uh, and then dropped again. That candlestick is, is not giving you that data. So this alone is, is, also, is already helpful, okay, to understand you know, how this candle kind of unfolded here just by a historical best bid and offer. But let's now add on the volume, okay? And uh, now we have a lot more insight to what's going on, okay? So we can see the volume up here just kind of went sideways for a while, went sideways for a while, kind of went up to the uh, uh, the top uh, here uh, in this, this area here. And um, uh, you can see that um, uh, we... Uh, yeah, that's the high here. Okay, um, you can see that uh, you know there's there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of activity, and then all of a sudden they hit the offer or they hit the bid hard, uh, and uh, uh, look at all the selling driving the price down. Okay, so now we can start to gauge here just with the the the, the volume alone, uh, starting to understand where traders are committed. Okay, where they took their transactions and what type of uh, uh, trading it is so this um, uh, dot here uh, is showing you the um, the overall like there's more sellers than buyers here okay green is an aggressive uh, buy a market buy red is an aggressive uh, sell market sell okay and uh, you know it, it's a dot like this in, in the pie display because uh, there's so much uh, trading that took place here that we we simply can't display it all uh, but you can if you zoom in. So you can click on the hand tool, hover over this dot, uh, and we can zoom in. Okay, now we're getting much more insight to what's going on in this area. And this is going to be a distinction between us and uh, other platforms that offer just um, uh, the uh, footprint chart. Okay, because you're not going to be able to do this in, in a footprint chart. You're, you're, it's going to be aggregated within either a time frame or a bar rotation. Okay, so all of this selling here, you'll just see it aggregate, and uh, you won't understand really kind of the action here that took place, uh, and the little pullbacks and possible opportunities to to get in and uh, and look for uh, continuation in this uh, downward movement. Okay, or uh, when you start to see a structure break here uh, and um, and starts to uh, uh, come back up, and you and you notice them uh, starting to lift the offer with aggressive buying. Okay, so uh, that's going to give a lot more insight uh, it, here by looking at the uh, uh, volume dots in Bookmap. Okay, now we can use this tool. We can hover over here and we can see uh, exactly what traded, uh, and uh, you have the date, the time, what was on the ask at that price level, and then the volume that traded. Okay, all right, and I can continue to zoom in here. Let's let's do that. Okay, and note how we're recording everything okay it, we're down at, at millisecond level well we can continue to zoom in and look at how all of these trades are just visually aggregated into a big dot okay but now this is really what occurred in the market this is about as transparent as you can get with the volume okay 102 contracts traded here at uh, 2468 okay and they traded within less than let's see this is uh 900 uh 
So yeah, here's here's a, here's here's a hundred milliseconds. So um, this is uh, about half of a blink of a human eye. Okay, if I zoom out a little bit more, uh, we'll we'll see uh, from here. Uh, uh, you know, this 218, okay, to 219. Um, no, I'm sorry, that's 100. So a little bit more. Okay, so 218 uh, to um, 222. Well, I'm just looking for 200 milliseconds. That's that's it, uh, and it's not the. Now here we go. Okay. Well, anyway, let me uh, let me continue on. We're just looking for 200 milliseconds, and uh, it's looking like uh, instead we're getting. Uh, uh, yeah, I usually can just zoom it right in there. Uh, anyway, you get the point. But as we zoom out, you also get the point. You can see where the volume's trading. Okay. All right. So that's the volume, uh, and that's the advantage uh, you get. Uh, Bookmap pro uh, solves that problem of properly displaying the volume, uh, when, where, how much, and what type. Okay. And that's a lot more information than you get on this candlestick. Okay, and uh, now, uh, there's there's still, though, a lot of transparency that we don't see in this market. Okay. And um, it's great that we see the transactions. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people are making their um, uh, decisions based on these transactions. Uh, trading decisions, but let's say, for example, let's look at this little area here. You know, like why why is price kind of bouncing here a little bit? Okay, well, maybe the buyers are you know are, are down here, and and maybe this is a really thick level of liquidity. Uh, maybe they really want to buy uh, at at this level here. We don't know that by looking at just the transactions. Okay, we have no uh, idea uh, where people are lined up to uh, to buy and sell. Now you do in the dome, all right? And the dome is good, but it's only good for the moment, okay? This dome, you're not gonna remember what happened back here, uh, let's see, how many minutes ago? Uh, yeah, eight minutes ago. So, you know, are you gonna remember that and how much trading took place here? Uh, how, how many um, uh, people were on the bid at that moment? What about the areas around it? Were they really interested in buying? Or you know were the uh, were the sellers uh, uh, getting filled and, uh, and and we see a you know a sharp move to the upside? Uh, let's let's uh, let's turn that on now, okay? Because uh, what Bookmap will show you and it, it'll solve that issue for you uh, because we can historically record the dome data, right? So let's uh, let's turn that on. There you go. And uh, not much down here, not much interest, <laughs> but a lot of interest up here. All right, and uh, you can see, and we can zoom in there, and we can also understand this uh, interest. Look at how, uh, as price is coming up here, uh, these guys are starting to pull their liquidity, and then they're also adding it. Well, they were up here at that at that higher level, but they, then they pulled. Um, if we zoom in here, okay, uh, now we're starting to understand. All right, this was a battle. Okay, there was. Uh, uh, buyers and sellers here uh, battling it out at this area. They wanted to get filled. Okay, look at the liquidity here. Uh, you know, 2,000 contracts. Uh, and then if I zoom into this area here, I'm sorry. So 1,600 contracts versus 1,400 contracts on, on each side. Okay, and uh, they're staying in the book. They want to get filled, and they are getting filled. Uh, aggressive buyers and sellers are taking the liquidity at these price levels. All right, so we have an understanding that larger players are getting filled up here, okay? And we wanna see who's gonna be the victor uh, of that uh, and um, uh, put this all together. Uh, Shiji, uh, the uh, candlestick, what does it represent? It's uh, open, high, low, close, okay, of a specific uh, trading period. In this case, it's five minutes. So. Uh, on this on this candlestick here, let's take a look. Uh, it opened up here, okay, and you can see it here on Bookmap, right? And you can see the volume that traded here, uh, and uh, then the and then it, um, it, it well it looks like it opened here. I'm sorry, it went up a little bit, uh, and then it uh, and then price went down, uh, and it closed right here at the very low of this five-minute period, right? 
Okay, so now we have a, a lot more transparency. We understand where traders are lined up uh, to bid an offer. Okay. All right. So let's see here. I promised to look at gold. Uh, let's uh, let's jump in and uh, and take a look here. Uh, Want to look at some more volatile markets? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, trader uh, Ian was asking me uh, to. Uh, uh, look at this. So uh, let, let's do that, right? Um, because the ES, okay, you know, you can understand just by the liquidity here in the book uh, that, um, you know, we saw 2,000 contracts up here. I mean, that's uh, significant, right? Well, let's take a look at gold. Okay, <laughs> we got to zoom in here. Um, look at the contracts that are available here in the book, okay? We're in the tens. Okay, not even a hundred. All right, and what what um, thinner markets like this, uh, what occurs uh, is you usually uh, see um, uh, the price uh, kind of skid through uh, areas uh, and then reverse. Right, you get more volatility, and and think about it. Uh, this is um, a, a very simple thing to uh, to understand. Uh, if there are not a lot of players in a market, right? So uh, let's say I want to buy something, uh, but there's not too many people out there that want to sell to me. And uh, there's two guys, one at, at $10 and another guy at $20. And the guy from uh, at $10 says, no, nah, you know, I don't really want to sell to you at $10 anymore. I, I think it's uh, uh, worth more. I'll sell to you at 20. So now I have two traders up at 20 uh, who want to sell to me. Okay, so I don't have a choice, right? And that's why uh, you, you, there's no other trading uh, that's available, right? So that's why you get these, uh, uh, you know, really, really quick moves, okay? And on low volume, okay? Uh, and it's easy for uh, larger players too. Like if you can see some of these areas here, you know, 45, 50, you can sweep right through that. Uh, a 150 lot and they're, they've already moved price a tick, okay? Just with their aggressive market order. Um, let's see to, yeah, let's adjust the, uh, the heat map here. Okay. So you, you want to see like, uh, some of the, um, uh, larger players. Well, the way the heat map works as I zoom out, uh, book map is calculating, um, all of the liquidity here, uh, in this chart range. And then it's giving you the very highest liquidity as being very bright white. And then it's scaling the rest in reference to that. Okay, so now if I zoom in, uh, th uh, that that uh, that calculation changes now. Okay, so now we're looking at uh, calculation for this amount of data here, uh, and uh, so you, you might see lines here that that change, uh, but then uh, if you zoom in, you'll you'll see that uh, you, you know now is giving that uh, reference to this current view, right? Yeah, liquidity is very poor in gold. Uh, agreed, uh, but uh, you know you can get some really nice moves uh, as well. Uh, let's see. So to adjust this uh, this scale of the heat map, uh, what you do is you click on uh, automatic uh, contrast configurations, uh, and then um, let's uh, uh, let's change it. Okay. So for example, I'm just interested in some of these higher areas of liquidity, the larger players. Right, so uh, what we'll do is um, uh, we're going to bring up the uh, the black uh, cutoff uh, and also the white cutoff here, okay? Uh, and then uh, we're also going to, uh, we can play around with the contrast uh, a bit, but uh, uh, I'm just going to jump right down to large size highlight, okay? And I'm just trying to pick the larger players, okay? All right, and uh, you can look at a very extreme view here. Uh, and um, uh, now he, this is where you find the liquidity okay, of those larger players. Okay, but uh, you know that doesn't really work for me, so uh, I'm going to adjust this here. I'm going to bring down my. Uh, I, I like bringing down the uh, uh, the white cutoff a bit. I want to see. I want to see some of the other liquidity in between these higher areas of liquidity. Okay, and um, uh, understand. Um, uh, you know, some of the pushing and pulling of price uh, due to a skew in that auction. 
and uh, now, now you can now I'm getting a lot more information okay so that's how you can adjust the book uh, the historical book uh, and current book okay it, the the graphical representation is is here okay so these numbers here the liquidity uh, is given a graphical representation so here's 83 okay and that's by far the most liquidity here in the book all right so it's the brightest area at the moment Okay, now this area was brighter down here, but this is historical. Okay, we don't know uh, what it is now because you can see the extent of my lit book is down to this price level here, and the uh, and up to this price level here. Okay, all right. So uh, let's jump in and start to uh, analyze the uh, the order flow. Okay, uh, and uh, and what's going on here. Okay, so the first thing to do. Uh, is to, uh, we want to understand the current auction, okay? We want to understand uh, where are the majority of those players, okay? The larger players, uh, and uh, what's the current auction? What's going on? All right, so uh, we adjust with the uh, uh, the contrast configuration, and, uh, you know, maybe you want to get a little extreme uh, for that exercise, all right? Uh, and then start to, uh, start to uh, evaluate. Okay, so uh, you can see that uh, it's pretty pretty meager uh, liquidity kind of between uh, the larger players here. Okay, and that's very typical. And, and look at our price activity. We're going sideways. So uh, usually uh, in uh, auction theory, uh, you'll find uh, responsive buyers down in the lows and responsive sellers up in the highs. Okay, and that's exactly what's unfolding here. All right, and you can see some uh, that kind of mid middle uh, mid term uh, liquidity is at this uh, 45 level, okay, uh, and um, uh, they're starting to get interested here, but it's not as high as uh, as below. All right, okay, so that's the first thing uh, we've identified that, uh, and then uh, let's take a look here at the. Um, uh, how they behave uh, around those areas of high liquidity. Okay, that's a, a, an important part uh, because uh, we want to understand if if they really mean business. If if this high liquidity here wants to get filled, okay, and um, uh, because uh, a lot of these times these guys don't have to be committed. No one has to be committed with their limit orders. They can pull them, and you see it all day long, right? Uh, they'll get cold feet or maybe they have a, some sort of like, you know, uh, disruptive uh, practice or something to maybe, uh, uh, you know, sucker you into a certain way or whatever. Uh, and that's what we want to uh, determine. OK, so we can zoom into these areas. So let's zoom in down here where we see the swing. OK, and uh, well, interesting stuff. Uh, this is uh, this is looking pretty good. Uh, we see the uh, the move down. Okay, and then we can see that they were um, they had 79 contracts here. Oh, let's go down a little bit further. So 79 contracts down here, uh, 83 down below. But look at they started to get in here with the, that uh, shorter term liquidity here. Okay, and this is this is uh, well for sure one player uh, is uh, and maybe others, uh, you know, uh, in here as well. But look at some of the liquidity. And look at how it's being provided, okay? High liquidity here, let's use our rollover tool, okay? We see 96 contracts here, okay, compared to down below 91. So this is the highest in the book at that moment. Uh, and, then, uh, and then 89. And look how this player here has got to be the same guy. Uh, you know, very high probability. As soon as he pulls from this area here, he's even getting more aggressive and he adds it one tick higher. Okay, so you can understand this algo uh, behavior. Okay, how it's uh, you know look at look at this behavior in here. Uh, it wants to get filled, but it's looking for something. Okay, uh, and um, uh, that's uh, this is showing us uh, something something interesting. Uh, you know, I don't I don't really. It's hard to gauge. Like, uh, uh, did it really have the intent to trade down here? And I would say no. I mean, it keeps on pulling and adding in this area. Uh, it, if it really wanted to trade, uh, this would stay in the book. Okay, they're not going to give up their line, uh, pl their place in line. It's a FIFO market, first in, first out. So uh, that's where these traders down here. There's a distinction. 
This is longer term liquidity. And this is uh, shorter term liquidity in between. Okay, but this is pretty interesting to see this algo working, and 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 this is um, usually the case. Uh, uh, I, I was speaking with uh, with Ian. Uh, usually, the case in the thinner markets uh, like stocks uh, or um, or gold or or the DAX, uh, you see uh, it's more transparent to see this kind of behavior. Okay, in the S and P, it's so thick that this guy would be kind of disguised. We wouldn't really understand or see this kind of behavior. Okay, but it is really apparent for us here in gold. All right, and I don't know if this guy, it doesn't look like, uh, you know, he got much on, uh, but uh, uh, they certainly did here, okay? This is where they uh, they broke this uh, microstructure. Uh, they uh, lifted the offer, swept the book to the upside, uh, and then now we're in a new trading range, okay? Uh, so, um, uh, CG, I, I hope that uh, that helps you. Uh, now, now we're starting to identify some of the, uh, uh, you know, price structures here and the order flow within that price structure. Okay. All right. And it's holding, it's still holding that structure, uh, at the moment. Okay. So, uh, uh, there's all sorts of potential strategies here for you then. Okay. And that's why I, I hesitate to give a strategy um, uh, I can, in the part three of that educational course, uh, we give you some strategies, uh, to look at, uh, but it's, it's really, um, it's really up to your methodology. Uh, but, uh, for example, uh, you know, if, uh, if auction market theory, we broke to a new level and they're supporting price up here, well, maybe you want to be a, a, a buyer down here, a responsive buyer. We're in a new range. Okay. Be a responsive buyer and look to cover uh, at the uh, at the top of the range. Okay, or uh, maybe you're looking to cover at maybe the midpoint. Okay, of that. Uh, yeah, the the trend lines. Well, I mean, we're just identifying structure and out out uh, outlining that for you uh, to understand what's going on. Uh, you know, we can look at another uh, here, and uh, we're holding it, right? I mean. This is uh, this is something we covered in part two, I believe, um, about structure. Value is being determined within this this range here. It is trending, okay, but it's being determined uh, in a trending uh, trending range, okay. So uh, you can look to fade some of the uh, higher areas back to the middle, or you can look to uh, to get long uh, in the, some of the low value areas down here, right. So that's uh, that's the idea. Uh, there's also a horizontal value here. Okay, so if uh, if we take a look at that, so it's up to you. Uh, whatever you look at, right? Look at look at how I mean this is just it's beautiful, right? Look at the breakout here, acceptance breakdown here, right back to where we broke from right back down again and uh, it, it doesn't go to where we broke from here it goes further in this case uh, and it, it tests uh, uh, the low here uh, in this in this this low here in this time frame and it comes right back up okay and then it breaks this structure once again and it's bouncing back and forth on top of this so you can start to understand uh, you know fading the uh, uh, outside edges uh, and um, uh, you know, for looking for a return back to value. Okay. So um, there's your uh, horizontal and your vertical lines and just, but what's important uh, is to uh, understand the order flow within the structure. Okay. So let's do that. Let's take a look here. And, uh, and what do we see? And let me uh, bring up the dots of dot size. I want to look at the volume a bit. Okay. Oops. Volume dots. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, so we were gauging uh, gauging earlier um, where the traders were lined up uh, in the book and what was their uh, intent to trade at some of these levels. Okay. And we read that that these guys were pretty interested in trading down here, and we saw this algorithmic activity here. And then look at them on the uh, on the offer. Okay. As price is coming up here, they start pulling, uh, and um, uh, we know that uh, they're really not interested in trading. 
Okay? And that's that's important to know. That is an advantage. All right. And uh, that kind of transparency uh, is, is something that Bookmap can uh, can deliver. All right. So uh, now uh, we uh, we have our structure. We're understanding the order flow. And uh, let's take a look here uh, at the transactions. Where are they occurring? Where are traders actually committed in this market? All right. Well, our structure is telling us they're committed above this uh, uh, 20 uh, or 12 uh, 46. Okay. And um, uh, other than that, let's see, we want to read where the transactions are taking place. And we want to understand what kind of transactions they are and how much. Uh, and um, it, it still has a slant here to the upside, okay? Because look at this nice cluster trading up here, and look at the color, okay? Uh, in fact, we can uh, use our um, uh, imbalance indicator here uh, up in the top right-hand corner uh, to give us a feel for uh, this, this trading here. And we can also look at our column, uh, our CVP. Uh, it's a volume profile uh, for just the data here within my trading window. All right. So uh, you can see that this reflects all of the trading action here. Now, you can right click on this and you can format this column. Okay. And we can split out that data. Okay. Now we're getting a lot more insight. All right. So we see the... Uh, uh, there is more buying than selling here, okay? Our, our volume uh, imbalance indicator says plus 8%, uh, and you can see the uh, uh, there's more green here than red, and we can actually add up the numbers if you want, okay? Okay, so that has, uh, you know, there's more interest in trading at a higher level, okay? What about down in, in some of these levels here at the, at the low around this 1246, okay? Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some sellers here. Uh, but um, uh, then we, uh, you see the aggressive buying here. We kind of break out of a very micro structural range here, right? And we get a pullback right to it where we broke from, uh, and then we see the buyers are still engaged, okay? So uh, you, you see that? Well, you know, maybe this is so micro structural, I, I kind of uh, hate to go over it, but we want to look at gold. Uh, but the, the concept is the same. Uh, the, the buying started here. We're looking for coming back up into some of these higher areas, uh, and um, and that's exactly what we do. In fact, we uh, it looks like we uh, break the high here uh, and trade a little bit a little bit higher. Okay, so you can understand now now how to um, uh, integrate uh, some of the uh, order flow uh, into your trading uh, if you're looking at uh, some of your technical analysis on your higher time frames. All right. Okay, and uh, this flips and switches all the time, okay? The higher liquidity, let's look at the auction. What about uh, where they're bidding and offering? Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't really uh, get a lot of that information here, right? Uh, we, um, uh, we can see that um, uh, the higher liquidity is at the ends, right? So we're just kind of bouncing back and forth here. Uh, another insight is right here, okay? There's more aggressive buying. In fact, kind of curious to see it come back down a little bit further uh, than here and test the uh, the lows again. Okay, but they found buyers again, right? All right. I I think these guys at 47 are going to get tested. All right, and uh, that's only I know that's only a few ticks away, but we were reading that back here. Okay, and then agreed. Uh, this it was um, and this looked good, uh, but then you start to see some of this activity too. Uh, and then, um, and then looking at the liquidity at being at the ends, it's not giving me much uh, in terms of uh, uh, how this might unfold, and and why is that? Because I want to see a lot of buying activity in the uh, in the auction underneath here, okay? Uh, and um, uh, the overall is still transactions are telling us this is going to occur, okay? Uh, but um, and then here we go, all right? So real time, all right? Here we go. So we, we tested through 47, uh, and uh, we still see a lot of buying. Actually, really big iceberg order just went off too, 132 contracts. All right. So, uh, uh, you know, that uh, need to be wary uh, of that, uh, you know, because um, we're getting an a, a added confluence here uh, that uh, someone's getting filled here with a hidden order. Okay. So now, and they're not coming up. They're, the where are the aggressive buyers now? 
right? They're not here. Now the sellers are, are starting to jump in. Where are we going to go? Well, first target would be down here. Uh, second target would be below the swing, maybe. Uh, depending on your, you know, aggressive stance, or maybe you're looking for 45 to get tested down here. All right. Okay. Any questions on that? Do you, is it kind of clear how I'm going through and analyzing the order flow uh, and within a, a, a structure? Uh, very objectively. It's just, you know, just read this. You can read it like a book. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, you can, uh, you start to put these pieces together. Okay. We were looking for the breakout. Okay. We got it. Okay. But, um, uh, it, it, we saw iceberg detector up here showing us someone's getting filled, uh, with large size. Okay. And we did not, this breakout here is only about uh, one, two, three, four, four or five ticks. Okay. And that's not bad, but, um, uh, uh, we did not come up and test uh, 4750 up here, okay? and that's very high liquidity, 100 contracts, 84 contracts, all right? Okay. All right. So uh, there's a, there's a, that's the process here, uh, starting to identify some of the structure and starting to read the order flow, identify the larger players, okay, the large transactions and where they're occurring, and the uh, the large liquidity and where it's showing up, and we want to understand also how they're behaving. That's the important part here. It's con that that is where it gets contextual, right? And uh, uh, it's not an indicator. Uh, we want to understand like did they want to trade? And look look here how they stayed in the book. They certainly wanted to trade here. Okay. How many contracts? Okay, 100 contracts, and we can see how it's getting filled, uh, and um, and we look at the volume, right? So that that th this this uh, this trader up here who wanted to sell, he he got his wish. Uh, he's a seller. Okay, and we see iceberg order uh, as well. Okay, all right, so. Uh, Getting back to the uh, okay, so well here here we go. That's this is exactly what we read, right? Uh, we're, we're we we started to note uh, uh, something uh, interesting or different up here than before, right? Uh, and uh, and and now now we're back down to uh, the low of this range here. So are the buyers still interested here or not? Right. Well, let's zoom in and, and check it out. Okay. I'm not seeing a lot of buying interest. Okay, what about uh, uh, the aggressors? Okay, uh, the market uh, buy orders. Not yet. Mostly selling here. Okay. In fact, uh, Bookmap is really nice at not only showing where the transactions took place, but where they did not take place, and that is important. So little areas of complete exhaustion here. Nothing traded up here. It retested back into this little range here. Nothing traded. Okay, but you're gonna you're gonna be able to utilize that on higher time frames. Look at this little area up here. Okay, let's just zoom in. Okay, and th and this is let's see we're looking at uh, five minutes worth of data here, right? Well, you 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 would see this behavior. Okay, you would not see this in a um, uh, in a footprint chart. Okay, in fact, we kind of exhausted out a couple times here. Uh, at um, uh, this level of 46.90, uh, and then uh, one tick below, and that's not good. Uh, you know that doesn't bode well here. If you start to exhaust out here, the sellers can, uh, if they see that, they can, they can, uh, you know, there's algos who sniffing this, uh, and they they can get very aggressive and start to uh, uh, hit the bid pretty hard, and and that's actually exactly what it looks like they did. Uh, so uh, uh, anyway, uh, that's what. Um, that's what transpired. Okay. Now, a lot of the times with the th with the uh, thinner markets, this kind of activity occurs more often. Okay. Usually, it's quite a bit more. Uh, but you'll you see the iceberg uh, here of 152 contracts uh, basically absorbed a lot of that uh, buying pressure. All right. So it that there's the your, your absorption. All right. Uh, and uh, that's that's how this transpired. Uh, the um, 
uh, a lot of times if you didn't get that 152 contracts absorbed here with a hidden order, uh, we would have come up here and tested 47.50. Okay, and you'll get moves through a range and then it's, it gets very trappy uh, and uh, especially in the DAX. I mean, the DAX is uh, notorious for uh, for uh, that kind of activity. So you'll see a lot of um, uh, range uh, uh, bound trading in a DAX where, uh, you know, you'll get, you know, pretty harsh moves through, but then they'll trade right back into the range. And that's the, the difference between something that has thinner liquidity uh, and then compared to the ES, which has much thicker liquidity. All right. Okay. All right, well, a little bit of a bounce. Uh, again, kind of trappy uh, right down below here. Uh, you know, grab some liquidity. And we see buying interest start to show up a little bit here, right? Okay, uh, let's see. Let me get to the questions here, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, a lot of questions, and uh, I've been rambling, but I wanted to make these points uh, and um, uh, go through them in, in some detail here. Uh, those, that was due to some of the earlier questions. Okay. Uh, Shiji, do you have any any questions? Uh, let me know. I uh, covered about how how to uh, to read this and uh, and looking for potential uh, potential trades here. Okay. Okay. Uh, William, sorry. Uh, now, no, no CL today, uh, but we've we've got gold. Uh, let's see. A bunch of questions here, so uh, bear with me. Flip the book at eleven oh five. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Okay, Francisco is talking about uh, a behavior that we see very often in these markets, okay, and that's a flip of the book. And I don't really see a good flip. Yeah, I mean, yeah, kind of. I mean, uh, usually it's um, usually it's a, in a you know when you break to a new level, I mean, and it, that's that's true. It is doing that here, but. What, he, what uh, Francisco is talking about is high liquidity here on the uh, on the offer. I'm sorry, on the bid, uh, and then uh, and we see that we we notice that algorithmic activity kind of working it within here, and then these guys. Well, we don't know if it could be the same guy here, um, but it, you know that high liquidity was here and it flips over and now it's on the uh, it's still on the bid, okay? But it, it's flipped over to a higher level, okay? So uh, yeah, the flip we're looking for is something like maybe, uh, let's see if we can find it and the big trend move up. And what this does, here's here we go, okay? What a flip will do, and there's a nice video we have on it. Uh, in fact, let me, let me uh, find that and uh, uh, refer you to that. Let's bring down our dot size, let's go to default, okay? All right. Well, here's the breakout. Okay. Uh, earlier today, uh, 1037, and um, we can see the high liquidity here. They started to pull. Okay. And as we zoom out a little bit more, uh, they started to flip to the other side down here. Okay. So why does this occur? Right. Why does a flip occur? Because these guys they don't want to be sellers here, but they want to be buyers now on the other side. Okay. And that uh, helps very much helps define the new trading range that this is in because uh, now they're uh, they they're looking for value at this uh, higher level okay all right not the greatest example uh, but um, uh, let's see all right continue on with the questions here Uh, yeah, absolutely. Value at the POC. A absolutely. Um, um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm with you, uh, Francisco, on that. Uh, Ian, possible accumulation. Yep, 
uh, what's I, I remember you, I saw that when uh, it came in. Um, I don't think so. Uh, I don't. I don't see them accumulating. I didn't see the transactions take place. The accumulation we're looking for is something like this, right? Absorption, accumulation. Okay, up in this area here, that 152 hidden orders, and this area here getting filled. They're accumulating. Okay, uh, uh, or um, yeah, I mean, you know, they're 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 going. They they want to be filled. They want to be short, and they are. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. At forty-seven. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know the right at the at the value area high. Okay. Well. Yeah, you're looking more at uh, kind of a uh, longer term uh, chart and looking at value area highs and lows and et cetera. And, you know, you, you're going to note that's where traders are lining up. Okay. A lot of them are because a lot are trading uh, with volume profile. Okay. So uh, uh, this is value for them at a value area high. Uh, Kate, you want me to zoom in on that iceberg? Yeah, no problem. Okay. Well, I mean, okay. So this is what unfolded here, uh, and um, uh, there's there's a little bit of a lag, uh, and um, uh, between the bid and the offer uh, here versus the um, the transactions that took place. So it's impossible to trade outside of the uh, uh, the best offer here. Okay, but uh, it's just it, you know, there's a delay. Uh, they're two different data streams, and that, that's why. Okay, and different data providers, um, you know, uh, some of them are, are um, uh, uh, you know, they'll, they'll um, uh, show some of this, some of them won't, um, some of them, uh, it, it depends. Uh, you know, it's, it's really how it's calculated for when it comes into the book. We just plot it, right? We're not a data provider. But this is what unfolded. Okay. And you can see how we're breaking apart every single iceberg here, okay? And we're still giving you all the data here. That was uh, one trade for 42. All right. Okay. That answers your question, Kate. Okay. Let's see. Robert. Um, Yeah, well, uh, Francisco, your, your, your question about um, uh, the um, exhaustion, uh, it can be tricky to trade. In fact, we cover that in part three of that um, uh, educational package. Okay. Uh, let see, Stanley. Uh, okay, you were talking about oil. Uh Yeah, uh, well, you also notice that in the thinner markets, like that iceberg order, it stopped price, right, basically. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, in the S&P, you're going to need some more iceberg orders. Okay, and uh, last question, uh, William. Okay. Okay. So you're talking about thinkorswim and, uh, how they, uh, uh, provide their data. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Um, I, I didn't know that they kind of bundle it in blocks. Uh, that's similar to interactive brokers. Uh, but, um, it, you know, that can be fine. It, it depends on, um, uh, you know, your, um, time frame for trading. Okay. If you start zooming in like this with that kind of data, it's not going to give you good insight, okay? Because we're down at millisecond le uh, levels here. Uh, they're they're um, uh, providing that data like like uh, interactive brokers every every 500 milliseconds, okay? Every half second, basically, that's like two blinks at plus uh, of a uh, of a human eye, okay? Uh, and that's not bad, but you know uh, we we can see a lot more. Uh, here in bookmap. 
Uh, look at our 45 level. Interesting stuff. Okay, so buyers are now down here at 45. Okay, so uh, notice uh, uh, we 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 saw this kind of unfold here, uh, and um, uh, so not noted that something was uh, was a, a bit off up here, uh, and uh, and then uh, you know looking for the follow through, uh, which would happen, I would say probably around here. Uh, for me, okay, um, I, I would I would stay out of this until maybe uh, some of the exhaustion I saw here, especially I especially like exhaustion up here, and it can't even reach that area and it exhausts again many times. It exhausts one two three. Okay, uh, that's showing a lot of that's showing some weakness. There's 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 no buying activity any longer. Okay, and then uh, you saw me give the targets. The first target was down here, and those guys actually did show up. Uh, where we broke from, uh, and then I was looking for down here, uh, and those guys kind of showed up too, maybe a tick or two lower. Uh, and then uh, look at look at this uh, interesting stuff. Uh, we return back to, um, uh, horizontal line. Okay, we return to back to where we broke from here. Okay, so here's your no another trading opportunity here. Okay, so are the sellers still engaged here? Right, uh, and uh, and they are. Okay, or I should say, uh, maybe a lack of buying uh, as well. There's some buying activity here, but they just don't pull it up any further. Right. In fact, there isn't a lot of selling in here. Okay, not until down here, and they break it one more time. Okay, and that's that's gold. You know, uh, that's this market. Okay, and ultimately we were targeting 45, the swing down here, uh, and that's exactly where they're lining up. Okay, all right, guys. Well, uh, uh, let's uh, let's call it a day. Uh, if you want to give Bookmap a try, uh, then uh, uh, you can find it here um, with. Um, and let me see if I can show you. Uh, I put that video in really quickly for you. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if you want to give it a try for that 14 day trial period, uh, it's under pricing tab here, uh, and, uh, and give it a, give it a shot. So the, um, the video I'm talking about in the flip of the book, uh, let's take a look at that. Let's go to the playlists again, and these will be really helpful for you. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we, we have, uh, these order flow video snippets here, click on that link. Okay. And, uh, here it is right here. Okay. All of these are helpful. They all go through some sort of phenomena uh, that Bookmap uh, visualizes uh, that gives you an advantage. All right. So let me give you this link here uh, quickly. Okay. And leave you with uh, we'll leave you guys with that. Okay. Ah, uh, thanks, Ian. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we, we covered micro as well as macro uh, and what to look for, though, in the micro within that macro view. And that's that's the key here, uh, you know, putting putting these pieces together and just do that with however it is that you trade. Uh, that's what's going to be helpful. All right. OK. Oh, you're welcome. Yep. <laughs> uh, thanks, Francisco. Uh, Oscar winner, that uh, flip of the book. All right. All right. Yeah, thanks, William. Okay, thanks, Homera. Uh, let's, uh, let's call it a day, guys, and uh, we will catch up with you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.